Well, ladies and gentlemen, election day has come and gone and America has voted on the 47th president of the United States. And joining us on today's Unscripted Faith, you're going to hear from political analyst Jerry Boyer. He's going to break down all that you need to know about the election results. Yeah, and we have Pastor Tim Hatch from Tim Hatch Live with us. He's going to share his take on the election results, how it will affect our world, and how the church should respond. Today's episode is an important one, and you don't want to miss a single moment as Unscripted Faith begins right now. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You know, it's the day after, yes. and I am blown away because I did not expect what happened. How about you? Yeah, yeah, I mean, the sweep was wild. Yeah, I'm completely <laughs> blown away by it. I mean, I went to bed around 9 30, 10 o'clock, and I'm there watching Dozed Off. Next, I woke up at 2 o'clock, and it seemed like the whole election had already been sealed. I, yeah. I wasn't expecting that. No, we were thinking the results would continue to be counted for quite some time. <laughs> we're here, the Lord is here, and we're moving forward, and our first guest is outstanding. His name is Jerry Boyer. He's a political analyst, and he is going to bring some great insight. Jerry, it's so good to have you with us on Unscripted Faith. Jay, great to be with you. You know what? First things first, let's get right in on it. Uh -huh. I want to, I, you heard my take on it, right. my commentary. <laughs> right. I want to know yours. You have an, a, back, a background that's completely extensive. What was your takeaway from what happened yesterday? Well, I, I went to bed at 10. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I follow the political futures market very closely, and people don't know what that is, but just like you can, you know, you can um, pay, place a bet on stocks or bonds or commodities, and if it goes in the right direction, then you make money. You can do that with oh, political outcomes. Hmm. Um, in fact, in 2016, when we did election coverage here that night, we saw here at Cornerstone when the, when the futures oh, yeah. market, yes. you know, uh, passed over into Trump territory. And so it's not polls, it's people with skin in the game. They actually have money at stake. It's not gambling. There's a gambling version of it, but, you know, this is run by academics or sometimes by markets. And when people have skin in the game, they pay a lot more attention than when they're answering pollsters. So I went to bed fairly confident that the futures markets were right and that we'd have a Republican sweep and, and Donald Trump as the 47th president. Um, I also went to bed early because my life doesn't depend on that. Amen to that. Uh, my peace doesn't depend on it. Um, God's in control. And that's become almost a truism. And as I think about this a lot, and I've, been, I've run campaigns and I've been in political strategy, um, we think of ourselves as playing a chess game against our opponents. But I don't think that's quite right. God is the player. He's playing against his opponent. We are the pieces. Now, pieces have an important role to play. There is no chess game without the pieces. Right. And pieces have certain gifts and powers. You know, bishops can do some certain things, and, you know, rooks can do others. And, you know, uh, but the real king isn't on the board. The real king is moving the board around. And I think something happens with Christians when we get engaged politically, we get so caught up in it, instead of discipling the nation, the nation disciples us, that we put our hope in politics, as opposed to putting our hope in God and then engaging in politics. You know, what did wow. that priest say was the chaplain? Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition, right? He's the <laughs> Lord of battles. He's going to determine the outcome. We as America have business with him. And then he can move things in the right way, and we will get the kind of leaders that we deserve. Well, actually, I, don't, I, think, I, I think we're getting a little mercy. I think we're getting a little better than, than we deserve. Yeah. But that's for the purpose of growing and building the kingdom and the church, of which politics is one part. Now, I'm thankful for the results last night, um, and I think they're going to be generally better for our nation than the alternative by a, by a wide margin. But I'd be thankful this morning if things had gone the other way. We would still be rejoicing because God moves the heart of the king whithersoever he will. It's like, right. it's like he's a hydraulic engineer and he can move king's wills around like people engineer rivers. So that's kind of my thought right now. But you know, you mentioned something really good because we're going to wake up believing in Jesus either way. It, yeah. it doesn't matter, you know, yeah. we're going to, but there's a lot of people out there that they're right now, they're having to take Valium and Zoloft and everything else because they're all anxious and things on that line. Mm -hmm. right. What would be your input concerning that? I mean, for people that are concerned about, uh, well, now um, the guy who I thought wasn't going to be in is in, what now? My input wouldn't mainly be, I wouldn't first give input to them. I would first give input to the people who terrified them. 
and I would say woe unto you if yeah. you put stumbling blocks. Wow. Media lives on fear. Not all media, we're here at Cornerstone, yeah. right. all right, but you're not all media, and most That's media right. isn't like you. Uh, and Fox News lives on one kind of fear, MSNBC lives on another kind of fear, so now we didn't know for sure which half of the country would be terrified, now we do. But that's because the media went out there, certain parts of the media went out there and flogged this Trump is Hitler narrative. That is extremely destructive. First of all, it's bearing false witness. He's not Hitler. He was president for four years, right? right? If, if, if he was Hitler Jr., I think we would have found out then, found out, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, he moved the, he recognized Jerusalem as the capital instead of Tel Aviv. Um, he shrunk the size of government generally in our lives rather than increased. I can tell you, Adolf didn't shrink the size of government in the lives of Germans. I think Trump has problems as a leader. He's not as Sorry restrained about. as yeah. Proverbs tells us a king should be. And I pray for him to grow in that office. But woe to anyone in media who makes your living by terrifying people. Now, to the, to the people who are terrified, I'd say understand that you were terrified for monetary gain. So people terrified you, so you'd watch, um, and they would tell you it's the last election of our lifetime. By the way, both said that. That's right. And it isn't. Yeah. That's right. a lie. It's not the yeah. last election of your... Understand, you've been exploited. People who you trusted in media really monetized your fear, and you can be free of that. Now, you got to put that trust in someplace else, yeah. right? You can't be, I don't trust anything, because people cannot live without trust. So you put that trust in Jesus... He's in charge, he's in control. You put your like, intellectual trust in people who follow Jesus. In other words, you still need media, you still need guidance, you need, still need people to explain things to you. And you trust the church, broadly, the, the kingdom of God, the, the people of God on earth, you trust their consensus and you go on with life and you can be free of that, really. And I think there are a lot of, there are a lot of people, I, I think about how the demographics of the election go. It's really weird that we say, well, white men do this and black men do this and white women do this and single women do this and all that stuff, as if we're determined by race and gender and age when we're human beings made in the image of God and we can all believe the same things. But I also think about, say, African-American women who did not vote for Trump, you know, but there was a big gap there. Well, these are sisters who are our sisters in Christ. And we love them. And we, you know, we probably, I probably have different political views, but we love each other. And we're, we're not Hitler. And we're not going to come and try to harm you in any way. And can we come together in Christ and say, well, if we don't agree about all the politics, can we agree about the ultimate politics, which is the kingdom of God? If Jesus is king, and I think a key moment in this election was in that Harris rally, when someone got up and said, Jesus is king, and she said, you're at the wrong rally, yes. right? I didn't uh, catch that. Yeah, yes. she said, uh, you're, wow. at the wrong, yeah. you're at the wrong rally. And I thought, wow. yeah, but you know what? There's a rally always going on in the universe. It's trillions of angels and archangels who are so powerful they can spin off galaxies. You're in the wrong rally. Wow. Because the universe belongs to the Jesus rally where he's king. The angels and archangels and, 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 uh, and powers and dominions and martyrs of the past and prophets and apostles, this great cloud of witnesses is the rally. And, um, and the earth here is a little bit of an outlier because we're not all rejoicing in God. So the real rally has always, and that was something that was sung by Christians when they were in the, when they were in the Colosseum. You know, the Romans were around them calling for their blood, but around the Colosseum were the angels and archangels. And the martyrs knew that. So whether we win or whether we lose, the rally is Jesus' is king. Wow. That's the celebration that goes on forever. Come that is on. Awesome. Wow. Yes. Well, you know, I did not realize yes. that. And uh, I don't know if you know, when did she, when was that rally that was held? Or oh, it feels some, like about four weeks ago, yeah. maybe. Four weeks ago. Yeah. But the, her la one of her last stops was in Detroit at the head overseer of the Church of God of Christ with Bishop J. Drew Sheard. Mm. And she was there and actually spoke in the pulpit praising God. So I didn't wow, realize that, but yeah. that also happened as well, well. Well, she was in the right rally for that moment. She was yeah. for that but moment. But the thing exactly. is, the, Jesus is king in both rallies. That's yeah, right. That's the church right. is the place where we acknowledge the truth that every rally should acknowledge, which is Jesus is king. Wow, well listen yes. ladies and gentlemen, we have a whole lot more to cover with Jared. We also have P Pastor Tim Hatch joining with us as well, sharing his thoughts on what transpired and what it means for America and the church. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. God is doing a new thing. Be ready for it. With your best gift today, request Prophetic Reset, a powerful resource by prophetic leader and pastor Joshua Giles. You'll discover a 40-day journey unlike any other, one that will reposition you under God's powerful anointing 
deepen your relationship with Him and propel you forward. Through empowering scriptures, biblical insights, and prophetic tips, you'll discover how to reactivate your spiritual gifts and faith, release the old to seek Him anew, rest your mind in His counsel, and hear His wisdom for your next season. Even more, you'll witness His Word manifest in your life and return to His promises for you. Ask for Prophetic Reset when you give in support of Cornerstone Television today. Every gift helps us to spread the gospel through Christian programming. Call 888-665-4483 or give online at ctvn.org slash donate. Welcome back to Unscripted Faith and our special post-election edition. We're having our own little rally here with Jesus. <laughs> Joining us now is Pastor Tim Hatch from Tim Hatch Live. Pastor Tim, it is great to have you back with us. So glad to be back with both you and Jay, Angela. Yes, we love it. We've got you and Jerry here. It's going to be beautiful. So real quick, what are your initial takeaways from the election? Well, my initial takeaways are politically, it's an enormous swing from the left to the right. And we are looking at potentially a clean sweep across the board with conservative voices in the highest levels of government, the Supreme Court, uh, the House, the Senate, the president. Never in my lifetime have I seen this. I mean, I'm still, I still consider myself a relatively young man, but never have I seen an election swing so forcefully to one side. I think it's a repudiation to wokeism, uh, the far left agenda for the country. I think it's a repudiation to a lot of the uh, conversation around politics in 2020 that were very off-putting. They had, they had good intentions, justice, equality, um, fairness, e e you know, equity, but they had it wrongly stated and in some ways very offensively stated. And so now America has looked at the last four years as well with the uh, economic struggles of the average family. They've looked at the wars that have started. They looked at the catastrophe of the Afghanistan withdrawal. They are saying no emphatically to that agenda. And as Christians now, we have to take stock and say, where are we now in the plan and purposes of God on the cosmic level? Because we haven't won anything. We've just been given a different assignment, okay? So it's, the government is not our friend. The government is a tool and instrument of God. And we have to figure out now, how do we walk in faithfulness, in obedience to the Lord and to the governing authorities as an instrument of, of God's righteousness, but with a different mindset, so to speak? And, and so we've got a lot of prayer contemplation, meditation to do, reading our scriptures, studying, going to church, and, learn, and now learning how to be the light in what I think is going to be a far more um, softer uh, atmosphere, if you will, politically for evangelical Christians, as far as I can see. You know, the year 5785 is the year of the open window. 85 has the word hey, H-E-I attached to it, which means a window. 84 was a door, and I've heard it said that God shuts a door because he's opening up a window. And I would love for you guys to speak a little bit to that on what opportunity has been presented now uh, because of what's happened in politics. What opportunities do you feel we need to walk through? What windows are opened up for us that we need to seize because of this opportunity? You want me to go? Yeah, sure, please. Yeah, I'll tell you, the, the opportunity is that we get a chance to reflect the love of Christ to those who didn't vote like we did. And there are a lot of Christians, like Jerry was talking about, that did not vote for Donald Trump, and they did not do so out of their Christian conviction. Now, I personally disagree with them, but now my job is to say, come back into the fold with us. This, is, this political divide is over. And every four years, the country goes through this. We freak out. We get very... Uh, acrimonious, we get very angry at each other, and then we come af after the election and the inauguration, we come back together again. We gotta, we gotta pay our bills, do our jobs, but the church, the open door, is to preach the gospel and make disciples no matter who's president, no matter who's in the White House, no matter who's in the uh, House and Senate. And we have the same mandate that we've had since uh, Acts chapter 20, uh, Acts chapter two, preach the gospel, get people saved, Bring them up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. That's ultimately what we're always about as members of the kingdom of God. So that, that was 5785. You're talking about the Jewish calendar Correct. and, and hey, right? Yes. Um, yep. and so that's Hebrew word pictures. That's an interesting yes. a, a way of looking at it. So what window? First of all, the window to demonstrate that they're not who we said we are. They, they said that we're bullies. They said that we're oppressors. 
They said that we are fascists. Um, they said all sorts of terrible things about Christians, conservatives in general. We can prove them right or we can prove them wrong. Uh, the other thing is, I think the other window is, well, there's some, ever hear of the Overton window? Um, I, you probably heard of this, uh, uh, Tim. Yes. Right. So the Overton window, I knew Joe Overton. As you have a discussion, if you talk about things that you're not allowed to talk to, it's like you move a window in a certain direction. So it when you acceptable. hit forbidden topics, you can, move the, you can move more in our direction for the people who have the courage to say something like, abortion should be banned under all circumstances. When the political w discussion about abortion is, well, what are the exceptions? You're moving the Overton window. We can move the Overton window of the country, but we can also move the Overton window of the church more towards Jesus-centered rather than power-centered. Uh, and Jesus-centered is power-centered, yeah. of course, because he has the power. So when we talk about all our power, you know, all our strategies and everything, they don't really amount to much for God. Now, you have to do them, right? We go out there, we try to win elections, but Jesus is the ultimate power. Christus Pentocrator, Jesus, ruler of all. And we got to kind of get back to that. The other thing I would say is third window opened is this is the window to give the church time to prepare because unborn babies lost big last night. Uh, in referendum, and even Trump kind of moved away from pro-life convictions. Yeah. That means the culture right. is, in some sense, becoming more of a culture of death. At yeah. the same time, it's electing somewhat pro-life people. So I think I think Tim Hatch is right. So what did, what did Churchill say? It's not the end, not the beginning of the end, but it might be the end of the beginning. This is the opportunity to actually govern in a wise way and win hearts and minds. Wow. Well, one hundred percent, Jerry, and the, and we cannot underscore the fact that as as the people of God, we've got three things that are always for us in the Scriptures. They all begin with P. We've got prayer, we've got principles from the Scriptures, and then we've got promises. And I think about how Scripture moves. The narrative of Scripture, God operates uh, since the fall on the on the order of it comes. You have the fall, then you have the promise. I'm going to crush the serpent's head. Um, then you have the principles that follow from that promise. The people of Israel, a Abraham, given the promise of the land, but they don't get the principles of living in the land until they come, come into the wilderness and are redeemed from Egypt. God uses the promises to lead us to principled living. And I went to bed last night saying, Lord, what, what do we have to do no matter what this election outcome be, is? And those two phrases, principles and promises, we're, we're people of promise. God's going to work for our good. His kingdom will come. Jesus will reign on this earth. Mm. And while we Amen. await those principles, we pr uh, promises, we pray, when we start to realize some of those promises, then we got to look at our principles and say, how can we live? And Jerry, you hit the nail on the head. How can we live with goodness and mercy toward those who disagree with us and not model an, an, an open hostility that carries into the culture this toxic you know, conversation going forward for the next four years? Mm -hmm. So good. Prayer, principles. Do you want to respond to that, Jerry? Oh, I, I really, the head crushing, right, from, from Genesis 3. There, there, was, there was a head crushing element to this in that it, the ruling class has been suffering setbacks. The ruling class is largely secular uh, in its outlook, largely on the left, but largely secular. So America is largely a Christian nation with a fairly anti-Christian ruling class. So that's kind of the head so the, the loss of credibility over some of the COVID stuff, I don't want to get into all those debates people fight about, but there was certainly a loss of credibility from the ruling class in their handling of that. A loss of credibility with the forever wars, you know, and I was pretty close to the Bush administration, but you cannot bomb the world into democracy. So over mm -hmm. and over again, the experts are being proven wrong mm -hmm. because we have a class, we have a ruling class that has expertise and certification, but not wisdom. And only wisdom works, expertise doesn't work in the world, wisdom works in the world. So there's a, I mean, there's one definitive head crushing on the cross, right? When he was at Golgotha, the place of the skull, you know, and under his heel, you know, he was crushing the head of the serpent. But there are all these little mini head crushings all throughout Bible, uh, throughout right. the Bible and throughout history. Mm -hmm. And these moments where the ruling class is discredited are kind of head crushing moments. You know, Pastor Tim, do you think this is a time, um, well, kind of a two-faced question here. One, if, if you could be in every pulpit this Sunday, what would you say? And do you believe with that, do, do you believe with that, that this is a time where we can affect change in the heart of 
what people would consider the enemies, uh, the, the other side, are, and those that disagree with us, that we can affect change that can bring about uh, a complete reformation in our world and in the United States? Yeah, well, the first thing that I would say if I was in every pulpit of America on Sunday is, Lord, set a guard over my mouth. Like, yeah. That's what I would say first. Keep me from saying yeah. something yep. that yep. is going to be off-putting to that Good. lost person who's coming. And the, the election's not on their mind. What's on their mind is, my spouse just filed for divorce. My mother just came down with cancer. You know, the same problems that wow. human beings are dealing with yeah. pre-election are going to be the same problems they deal with post-election. And the business of the kingdom is to heal, to bring salvation, to preach the gospel. And that is our priority every Sunday. And so we do, again, this massive shift. I cannot, I cannot overstate this. I've never seen such a massive shift in one election as I have now, yeah. where these four powerful pl um, platforms, the House, the Senate, the Supreme Court, and the President are all potentially going to be conservative power structures in our culture. Now we have to um, speak in a way that appeals to those who disagree with us, and we have to be very careful That's that good. we don't build walls where we need to build bridges with those who do not believe like we do. The message of the gospel Acts chapter 15, what does James say in that first church council? Let's not make it difficult for those who are coming to faith. We've got to make sure that the door is open, that they hear that Jesus loves them, Jesus saves them, not political parties. And so as we present the gospel, that has to shift in our, in our cultural tone so that we appeal and we don't put off people by the, the election results that we might be happy with, but ultimately are not, you know, thy kingdom come. How about you, Jerry? When the New Testament says that Jesus is Savior, Son of God, and Lord, all of those were titles that had been given to Caesar. I've actually seen the coins, right? Because when you're a Caesar, you were adopted by the previous Caesar, and then he was divinized. So the Caesars were son, literally sons of God, Soter, Savior, Kurios, Lord. When, when Jesus, later Paul is saying that, that Jesus is the Savior, that he's the Lord, um, that, that he's the Son of God, they're saying Caesar isn't. And there's a whole lot of people who have turned to politics for salvation. Mm. I think that's mostly a thing on the left, but there's also some of it on the right. It isn't. Mm. So Doug Wilson, Pastor Doug Wilson recently said, politics is not the savior. Politics is the sinner. And like all sinners, it has wow. to be brought to Christ, forgiven yeah. and good. repent and mm -hmm. reconcile. So um, I, I won't be in any pulpits this Sunday, <laughs> but, but if I were, that's, I, that's probably what I would focus on. Politics will never save you. Mm -hmm. It might serve you, or it might hurt you, it, it, it can do good or ill, but it's not the savior. Do not put your trust in it. What does the Psalms, David, who was a king, who was a prince and then a king, mm. he said, put no trust in princes. Well, if David, maybe the greatest king in the history of the world other than Jesus himself, if he says don't trust princes, I think we, we certainly shouldn't trust the princes and princesses and those who want to be princes and princesses and kings over us now. Come on, that is a whole word and I love that. Tim, stick with us because we're gonna come back in just a few moments and all of us are gonna get to share some final thoughts of the elections and what we can expect in what's to come for our future. We'll be back in 60. We left the light on for you. Cornerstone Network is your home for Christian television. A place of rest, a beacon of truth, your source of encouragement and entertainment. Welcome home. Welcome back, and we're here with Jerry Boyer and Pastor Tim Hatch. And uh, Jerry, you know, we've got some closing thoughts here and in regards to where the church is going from here. 
Uh, I think that's a very important message, but you have something that's coming up that people can get in on that I'd love for you to talk about. Yeah, and it is about where the church is going from here. So as a student of history, the first MAGA revolt in American history was here in Pittsburgh. It was what they call the Whiskey Rebellion. Farmers, rural farmers were overtaxed. The tax was unjust and they had a, a violent revolt and they burned down the house of the tax collector that they went to church with at Old St. Luke's, one of the oldest churches in the country in, in Carnegie. And, and George Washington had to decide what to do. And Alexander Hamilton said, crush them. And George Washington said, no, I want to listen to them. Change the law. He sent an army, gave them a chance to repent um, and reasoned with them. And they ended up laying down their arms and there was an amnesty. So we need that magnanimity yes. in victory. Pittsburgh is, has this history of being this place where class wars and political clashes and culture clashes have come and has been the decider in many ways of the future of the nation. So we're going to have a service at Old Saint, uh, Father Jay and I at Old St. Luke's using the prayer book that was used in the 1700s, wow. going back to that moment when a church was divided in the first MAGA revolt and we didn't have a civil war because they kneeled at the same communion rail and they ate the bread and drank the wine of unity together. So that's the day before Thanksgiving. It's a day of, it's a day of Thanksgiving and prayer for those in authority because prayer for those in authority is yeah. the most important political thing you can do. Registering, great, get out the vote, vote. We all do that. If we're supposed to disciple the nations, we should vote because voting is a way to disciple the nations. But the most important thing is to, is to ask God for him to move the, the bishops and chessboards and rooks and pawns like me and all the rest of us around so that the, ultimately the game against the adversary is won. Awesome. When, and where can I get information about that at? Uh, you can go to Old St. Luke's um, website. It's in Carnegie. Um, or you, you, I'm easy to find on social media. Awesome. Just ping me, Boyer is B-O-W-Y-E-R, and I'll send you the details. Pastor Tim, we got about a minute left. Uh, give us some closing thoughts on what we can take away from this conversation. Yeah, we, um, we are not at a finish line by any stretch of the imagination, and there's a lot of evangelical Christians who might feel that way. We need to embrace not a political mandate. We need to embrace a cultural mandate. We are here to rule and reign with Christ until he comes again spiritually. When he comes, we reign physically. But until that time happens, we're in the heart healing business and pastors, I cannot stress this enough, there are people coming this Sunday who need their hearts healed. They need their souls healed. They need their bodies healed. That's the church's mission. And we are not going to uh, do ourselves any favors if we now start to believe that we've won when really we've just been given a chance to come together as the church and be the light in a still very dark world with the simple gospel of Jesus Christ. People need to hear that because again, the election is a small issue for so many people, and especially now that's over, Jesus is the hope of the world. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Pastor yes. Tim and Jerry, you. for yes. your Thank wisdom you. and what you're sharing, and yes. definitely want your closing thoughts as well. Yeah. So, I mean, Jesus is king. Come on. Nothing changes. Mm. Eternal perspective, Amen. you know, continue to focus on him and you're watch him. You're in the right move. rally. <laughs> yes. 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 Amen. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, we hope that you've enjoyed this conversation. No matter what side you voted for, Jesus is still on the throne. He's still the Prince of Peace. He is the King of Glory. And I believe our best and blessed days are still ahead of us. So be encouraged, seek the mind of Christ, and realize that Jesus is still on the throne. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.